In this video, I'm gonna be going over six common mistakes that software developers make. These are mistakes that I've made throughout the course of my career, and I wanted to make this list so hopefully you guys don't repeat them. So let's get into it. Want to avoid certain mistakes and common software development problems? Well, the sponsor of the video, JetBrains Academy, can help you out. JetBrains Academy guides learners through building real-world applications one step at a time. Through their study plans, learners will know the importance of documentation, logging, advanced features of debugging, and more. Skills that will help you avoid many mistakes that I'll be mentioning in this video. JetBrains Academy has a community of over 400,000 students that are there to help you learn and support you throughout your coding journey. And of course, they have their numerous tracks covering specific topics such as Java backend, Python for beginners, and more, with new tracks continuously being added. Each track comes with several projects to pick from that range from easy to challenging, each project can be opened and worked on directly from a JetBrains IDE. That way you can get comfortable using the IDE's powerful features. And of course, you can upload to GitHub to strengthen your development portfolio. Still not sure it's for you? We'll use my special link in the description to get your first month completely free. All right, the first one is putting all of your logic in your main function. Now, this doesn't apply to languages like JavaScript where there is no main method, but many major programming languages have one, such as Java, C++, uh, Python can as well. Main is the entry point in the execution of your program. So the first line of main is the first line of your program. Once the program exits the main function, your program is done. Main should really just be like, kind of like an orchestrator. It just calls the other methods and functions and delegates the heavy lifting to them. You really don't want a lot of your business logic in main. And I see it a lot in the professional level as well. And uh, I mean, you gotta break your methods down. So let's take a look at an example. Say we're trying to bake a cake. Your main method should look something like this. So the first step is to preheat the oven. The second step is to add the ingredients. Third step, mix ingredients. Fourth step, put it in the oven. And then if we wanna jump into the preheat oven method, at this point, then we'll say, okay, turn the oven on, set oven heat to 350 degrees, etc. So imagine if we had the code that did the preheating oven in our main method, as well as all the other methods. As you can see, it can get pretty messy pretty fast. Your code can get complex, and eventually it's just gonna be very hard to read and maintain. So having your main just call different methods and have the methods do the heavy lifting is definitely best practice. The next one is starting to code without having all the requirements. This is one I've definitely mentioned on my channel before, but I think it's important to reiterate because I see it happen all the time and it's probably gonna happen forever. I'm gonna show you guys one of my all-time favorite diagrams of the software development life cycle. Here you can see we first have an idea, then we have the requirements, then we create the design, then we start coding. Then after that, we do testing, we do validation, and then finally the end user starts to use it. As you can see here, all of these are necessary and important pieces to the software lifecycle. And as you can see, coding is really just one part of the entire diagram. But I see it time and time again where people just jump into the code without really understanding the requirements. It's kind of like if you were trying to build a building and you didn't know what it was gonna look like and you didn't have a blueprint and you're like, you know what, well, let's just start building it and we'll, we'll figure out the rest later. Sounds kind of ridiculous. I mean, that building's gonna collapse halfway through the construction. Software is very similar. That's why a lot of people fail their coding interviews is because they start jumping into the code without really asking questions about what they're trying to solve. All right, the next one is rewriting legacy processes. I've done this at my last two programming jobs and both times it ended up being a disaster. At some point in your career, probably many times, you're gonna run into a program that's very old, but a lot of things depend on it. Often it's written in a language or framework that was popular or trending at the time, but now hardly gets used or maybe it's completely died out. It's very tempting to be like, you know what, let's just rewrite the entire thing because none of us really understand it. The people that wrote it no longer work here, which are valid reasons, but tread with caution because the code is probably gonna be very complex. There might not be good documentation on it. And these kind of things always take longer than anticipated. Like one of the projects that we rewrote, we thought it was gonna take four weeks and it ended up taking four months. So I'm not saying don't ever rewrite a program. I'm just saying have a very good reason to do so and only do it if it's necessary. And another thing, if you do end up writing something 
make sure management is on board. Like I said, these things might take longer than anticipated and management becomes very impatient if it's not building out something new because generally they want you to be building out new features rather than rewriting old stuff because the new features are what, what makes the money. Next mistake is not utilizing your debugger enough. I would consider myself a debug junkie. I don't just use it for finding bugs. I use it, I probably use it more than I should and it maybe it slows me down, but it really helps me understand what's going on, especially when I'm working in a new code base. If there's any type of complex code where you're, you know, you have to keep track of a lot of variables, a lot of objects, debugger is gonna be your lifesaver. I just love having the ability to go in, set breakpoints anywhere I want and just step through the code. I really like being able to step into functions, being able to see the variables and what their values are, being able to see the call stack, so how many functions deep you are. And after talking about this, I kind of want to just make a dedicated video to debugging because there's so much to cover. Next up, we have writing poor documentation or not writing documentation at all. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Yes, of course, if you're not writing documentation, you can get things done faster but it's gonna end up biting you in the butt in the end. Some companies actually require documentation as part of the, the sign-off process for a feature. So you have to get it tested by an engineer, you have to get it tested by the user, and then you have to write your documentation. Once those are all done, then you get sign-off. And I feel like that's how it should be with every company. Not only good for yourself, because you know a few months later, you might forget how something was done, then you can have a reference to go back and look at. Or say you leave the company because you won the lottery or you got hit by a bus hopefully the first one. Other developers that now work on that software, they know what's going on. If there's no documentation, future developers are gonna have no idea what they're looking at, and it's just gonna lead to more tech debt. Next up, we have minimal or no error handling. And I'm also gonna throw logging in there because these often go hand in hand. So if you wanna sleep well at night, um, this one's essential. I'm definitely guilty of neglecting error handling because in my opinion, I mean, it's just kind of boring to me. That and probably testing are the things I like to do the least. And even when I learn a new language, I always skip the error handling part and just leave it for the end. But error handling is just as, as important as any part of your program. You know, things are going to break at some point or go wrong, whether it's a network or database request failing or just a bug in your code. So in order to ensure those errors get handled in an elegant way, you need to put in proper error handling. I mentioned logging. Um, logging can happen anywhere in your program, but I'm talking specifically in your error handler because you need to know where your code failed, what the error message is, and when and how many times it occurred. Also, a side note, um, make sure you have no errors in your error handler. One of our processes was failing, but we never got notified because when it went in the error handler, the error handler had an error and ended up crashing the program, so we didn't know. So we had a, a nice little chuckle about that afterwards. So again, I, I feel like I needed to mention those just so you guys don't repeat the same mistakes. Last month, I made another video titled Eight Common Mistakes Programmers Make. So if you got value out of this video, definitely check that one out next. As always, make sure to like the video and consider subscribing if you'd like to see similar content. Thank you so much for watching. As always, keep on coding.